Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So a few weeks ago, I showed you this exciting new HackRF Porter Pack called the H4M. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at what we've all been waiting for, a module development kit. Now let me just recap what features the H4M provides us in combination with the HackRF. So firstly, we now have two top mounted switches. The left switch enables or disables the onboard microphone and the right switch is a physical power switch, meaning we can save battery power when it's turned off. Now it's a hard off rather than a software controlled on and off. Obviously that can consume power even when it's off. So this is a massive improvement. The main USB socket is now USB-C, which is pretty much now the industry standard for these types of devices. Of course, they are more robust than those older USB micro sockets. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone stroke external mic socket that's also next to that USB socket. The top has the standard connections that we've seen on other port pack versions, and this consists of an antenna connection, a micro SD card slot, and two push buttons. Now, what's so special about the H4M is that this port pack version has an exposed GPIO port. This means we can connect external modules, just like the Flipper Zero. Now, just recently, an external module developer kit has been launched and available to the public to purchase from Open Source SDR Lab website. Now, this MDK consists of an ESP32, which is easily accessible via the breakout pins. Now, this allows fast development of applications and hardware that uses that H4M GPIO port. Now, at the time of making this video, the MDK boards cost around $35 US dollars. Now they do come pre-flash with an example firmware. This example firmware will provide a UR application on a porter pack, which you can inject serial data to via the MDK module. The ESP32 module on board also supports Wi-Fi, and you do get a little Wi-Fi antenna, which just kind of pushes into that onboard connector. Now the MDK just simply attaches to the H4M like this. Just make sure that it's fully flush and that the porter pack is turned off before plugging it in. To test to make sure the module is running correctly, I'm going to attach this GPS module, which I know outputs serial GPS data at a speed of 9600. We can then use that new UR application, which is loaded onto the porter pack from the module to make sure that the data is coming in and displayed on screen. Now at the moment, all this is doing is writing any data that is received on the UR the serial input pin on the MDK, and then writing that data to screen. This UR application and MDK firmware is available on GitHub, so you can download it and then create your own applications. Also, you can just kind of see how it works. Now, it just so happens that someone has already done this and created a couple of test applications. Now, these include a GPS reader, satellite tracker, and a demo matrix screensaver along with an application to control infrared LEDs. Now to try these other applications, we will need to install the firmware to the MDK board. Now this is actually pretty easy. With the MDK module unplugged from the H4M, plug in a USB-C cable into the USB-C socket on the MDK board, and then just plug the other end into your computer. Now hold down the DFU button on the MDK module, as you plug that USB cable in. The MDK module should now be in a state to accept new firmware. Then you just simply head to this web page to use the web flasher tool. You can compile this yourself if you want to and take a look to see how it all works before you compile it. Now I'll leave a link to the GitHub page for this if you're interested in seeing it in more detail. Now the ESP32PP web flasher page will provide two board options. The one we need is the MDK HW button. Now press this and you'll be prompted to select the COM port of that MDK board that you've just plugged into the computer. You can then just confirm the installation and then wait for this new firmware to be loaded onto the MDK board. Now once powered on, if we head to utilities and then select debug and then select EXT module. Now this will list all the available applications that's now stored on the MDK. These applications are coming from that new firmware that we've just installed. Now, one of the apps is a matrix style wallpaper. Now, this is really just showing off what the module is capable of doing in terms of processing power. 
Now, if we connect a GPS receiver, which outputs ASCII-based NMEA data at a speed of 9600 to the MDK, we can use this GPS data in some of the apps. Now, I'm using here an EO8M GPS receiver, and I'll link this below. Now, you do only need to use three wires, VCC ground, and then the GPS TX pin connects to pin six on the MDK board, which is the input pin for receiving GPS data. Obviously, that pin is dependent upon what's been programmed in the application. Now, if we head to debug, we can select external sensor. Now, this app will display location data from the attached GPS, and it will also display temperature data if you have supported environment sensors connected to the I squared C pins on the MDK. If you have a valid GPS lock with data coming in, then other apps like the ADSB app, which also has the option to show a map, will now show your location on the map, which I believe is indicated by a yellow triangle. The Fox Hunt app also supports the incoming of live GPS data, again showing your location on the map. Now, the Sat Tracker app is supposed to calculate overhead passes of popular weather satellites from NOAA or even the ISS. This also takes the GPS data from the attached GPS receiver. Of course, for any kind of satellite tracking, the device does need to know exactly where it is. However, for this to work correctly, then you do need to connect the MDK to a Wi-Fi connection, which has an internet connection, so that it can go off and download the TLEs for the track satellites. Now, time and date should also be automatically adjusted too, once it connects to the internet. Now, the last app which is available is the IR app, which I believe is still being worked on. But the idea here is to demonstrate how to send and receive data or commands using an infrared LED, which is then connected to the MDK board. Now, details on how to connect that or which pins are actually available on the GitHub page. Now, another cool feature of this MDK firmware is the web server. Initially, this firmware will create an ad hoc Wi-Fi connection, which will allow you to connect to it from a computer. You can then change the ad hoc Wi-Fi to connect to your own home Wi-Fi network. Now, connecting to your home Wi-Fi network, which has an internet connection, is definitely recommended. And this is so that the MDK can update the Porter Pack's time and date and also download those TLEs that we mentioned earlier. Now, here I'm just using a Chrome browser on my PC while controlling my H4M on the other side of the room via Wi-Fi. Now, we have seen it before where you can remote control using the USB cable, but this is done purely over Wi-Fi, allowing you to navigate the screens and use the HackRF. Obviously, there's no streaming audio, and any app which requires fast screen refresh times is not going to perform that well, but it's a start in the right direction for sure. One last thing to mention is that antennas is everything, and while I was testing this new board out, one of the tests that I showed you earlier was receiving ADSB, which is aircraft location data. So I tried a new ADSB antenna that I got sent, and I had it mounted directly on the top. And well, it worked very well, even indoors. If I placed it by the window, it performed even better. Now this only costs a few pounds, and if you're interested, I will link below. So the question is, could this possibly be the start of something that's going to overtake performance and features and literally usability compared to the Flipper Zero. Having this MDK or this module development kit available now makes it easy for us developers and hardware hackers to create something nice and fast to get the job done. No longer having to rely on software for decoding or encoding data, we can do it in hardware just by attaching those devices to the ESP32 that's on the MDK board. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and a massive shout out to all my patrons, my YouTube members, and of course my YouTube subscribers and everybody that watches my videos. Until the next one, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.